Good afternoon, guys. I hope you are all doing well and that you've had a lovely weekend of rest. All right, so today we are going to look at vision and we will look at defects of the eye, um, astigmatism, nearsightedness and farsightedness, and we'll also look at cataracts. And that's it, let me see who's here today. Oh, I had a lovely, lovely weekend and it's so nice and warm. I'm sitting in the sun with my cat on my lap. So I'm in a very, very happy mood right now. All right, so let's start looking at um, today's work. Now, um, we have focused on the part of the eye already and you need to know the anatomy, the functions. Uh, you'll never be asked to draw, but you will be provided a diagram. Remember that the eye is divided into three layers, the inner, the middle, and the outer layer. And if you study each layer on its own, it makes it a little bit easier. Today, we are going to look at binocular vision and the importance of binocular vision. We will look at the changes that occur in the human eye for um, accommodation and the pupillary mechanism. And we will also look at the treatment of the following visual defects. Uh, short-sightedness, long-sightedness, astigmatism, and cataracts. Again, this is part of the responding to the environment. Um, it includes the ear and the nervous system, and it's 40 marks in paper one. So let's begin. So this is, a, this is not for the exam, but it does show you how your eyes work and how your mind sometimes get tricked. So you are going to stay at the middle yellow stripe of the fish for about 20 seconds. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds. Just stay at that middle yellow stripe and then you turn your focus to the fishbowl and then tell me in the chat what you saw, what happened. Stay at the little yellow stripe in the middle of the fish for about 20 seconds and then move your gaze to the fishbowl and tell me what you observed. Uh, Genesis, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Um, I will look into why the lessons aren't available and then I will, um, you, the lessons will be uploaded today though to the Twitter account. So you go to the Twitter account. All right, so. Uh, Kyle Z sees a, uh, the outline of a fish or a yellow fish. All right, so I see that some people have already started seeing things. Now, this is called an after image. Uh, this is called an after image. And the reason for this is, remember you've got the three types of color receptors, the cones, um, the red, blue, or green ones in your, in your retina and they get very tired. So when you stare at a particular color for too long, these receptors get fatigued. And when you then look at a different background in a different color, the receptors that are tired do not work as well. And therefore the information from all of the different color receptors is not in balance, and this will create the after image. So you saw a, little, a yellow fish, um, and it was just because your color cones were a little bit fatigued. They were tired out a little. Um, that's an optical illusion. And there are many of them if you go online. But let's get to today's work. Quick revision of the eye. So we have the three layers, the outer, the middle, and the inner layer. You have your sclera, that is for protection. It is quite tough. You have your cornea, it is a three see-through for protection. It's also curved. You have your pupil that allows light to enter your eye, your lens, or um, diminish the amount of light. And then you have your lens. You also have an iris. Your iris is the colored part of your eye. And it's got two types of muscle we're gonna learn about today. They either relax or they constrict, they pull tighter. You have your ciliary body and you have your choroid. Now remember the choroid's got all of those dark pigment that absorbs all the light. And then you have your inner layer, your retina, where the cones and the rods are found. You have your vitreous humor. This is a jelly-like substance. And you have your optic nerve. And those are the three layers of the eye. For today, 
we are going to focus on the front part of the eye and what happens when we see. Let me quickly check for questions. All right, so. Just make sure. Now there's another fun thing to try at home and um, this is an introductory into the binocular vision. So what I want you to do is you can either use pens or pencils or you can just use your index fingers, your pointer fingers. Um, and you need to, you need to, um, de depth perception is the ability to judge objects that are nearer or farther than others. And to demonstrate the difference of using one eye versus two eyes to judge depth, you need to hold out a pencil in each hand or a pen, or you can just use your index fingers. So stretch out your arms in front of that, you if you're using your fingers, and point your index fingers towards each other. So you stretch out your arms as far as you can, and you point your fingers to each other, or you hold your pencils in your hand with the tips to each other or the ends to each other. Now you need to close one eye and try to touch the end of the pencils together or try and touch your fingertips together. You can switch between your left eye and your right eye and then try with both eyes. So if you've tried the left eye, you've tried the right eye and you've tried both eyes, you would notice that trying with two eyes is much, much easier. And this is because each eye look at the image from a different angle and then in your brain they overlap. So if you only use your left eye or you only use your right eye, your brain will only get information about the position of your fingertips or the position of the pencil tips from one eye. If you use both eyes open, it's much easier to point exactly where that position is and they can, you can touch them much easier. <laughs> a demonstration, I'll put, a, I'll put the camera on. Let me see if I can do that for you. I might just need to move into a shadier part of the room. All right, so can you see me? All right, so you stretch out both your, your hands and you need to try and touch your fingertips towards each other. You can also use two pencils. I don't have pencils around. You can use two pencils or you can use two pens and you just need to try and touch the two fingers together. Now you would have noticed I am wearing glasses because I am short-sighted and I have astigmatism um, and I have problems with depth perception. So um, that is kind of cool, isn't it? That if you only view it with one eye, it will be very difficult for you to touch the end. But if you use both eyes, it might be much, much easier. Yep, it is very freaky. Your body is the coolest thing that you have ever seen. Now, I'll quickly go back. There's another thing you can do, but you'll need someone to do this with you. You need someone to stand at least three or four meters away from you with a tennis ball or any small object in their hand. And then you can toss the ball or the object towards each other. You catch it and you throw it back to them. If you close one eye and they throw the object up into the air, it will look as if it comes towards you. And then you will pretend to catch it and look silly. So and there's another thing you can do to check out how depth perception works. If you try to catch a ball with one eye closed and someone throws it up into the air, it will look as if it comes towards you. All right, so we are going to switch between screens and we're gonna learn a little bit more about how your pupil works. We're gonna learn a little bit more about your pupil. Now, the pupil controls the amount of light entering your eye. If you are in very bright light, we tend to squint, so we close our eyelids a little bit, but our pupils also become much, much smaller. The word for smaller in science is constrict. It becomes smaller or narrower. 
if we are in very dim light or in the dark, your pupil will dilate, it will become bigger. So let's see how this works. I'm gonna first demonstrate with the website and then I will, now we remember this, we use this for the anatomy of the eye. Now where I would like you to focus is, look at what happens to the pupil size Look, and look what happens to the pupil. It either becomes uh, bigger, the, the opening, or smaller. And you can also look at these ligaments, the suspensory ligaments. So pay attention to the pupil and pay attention to the ligaments. Uh, no, if, if you are wearing glasses, um, you don't have to take them off. Death perception is usually affected if you have one eye or two eyes. Use one eye for vision or two eyes for vision. Death perception is all about using both your eyes. It's got nothing, your glasses might just help you to see the ball or the object coming towards you. Now I'm gonna move this slider around. You'll see that a little blue eye appears and it's just much easier to see the dark pupil against the blue background. So pay attention to the brightness. What happens to the opening of the pupil and what happens to the ligaments. So if I increase the brightness, you will notice that the pupil becomes narrow. So it becomes smaller, the pupil is smaller. And you will also see that this opening, the pupil is much, much smaller, so less light can enter. So less light can enter. So the pupil is smaller, it, it allows for the certain amount of light to come in. If the opening is narrow, not a, light, not a lot of light can come in. If you are in dim light, so if it's darker, you can see that the pupil is dilated. It's much, much bigger. And you'll see the opening here has opened up so that more light can enter your eye. So in bright light, you have um, your pupil will constrict. Now your pupil, the sclera is the white part of your eye. If you look in a mirror, the white part of your eye is your sclera. The iris is the colored part and the pupil is that little brown or bl the black spot right in the middle of your iris. Now your iris, you have two types of muscles in your eye. You have radial muscles, and you have circular muscles. Radial, if you think of the word radius, it's from the middle to the outside, from the middle to the outside. Circular is circle muscles. Um, now, in the human body, muscles always work two two. They usually work in pairs. So if you flex, if you make, you know, flex and allow your bicep to show, you will see that your bicep becomes bigger, it constricts, but your tricep, the muscle under your arm, elongates. If you, your eyes work the same, your radial muscles, if one relaxes, the other one will contract. So in your eye, you have radial muscles and circular muscles. If the radial muscles relax, the circular muscles contract and your pupil will become smaller. If you can't remember the order, just think about that pupil becoming smaller and the circle is becoming smaller. So your circular muscles contract, your radial muscles relax and your pupil will constrict, less light can enter the eye. Do we have any questions about bright light for the pupil? Right, Nipo, I will answer your question right at the end. All right, I'll answer right at the end. What causes corneal arcus? Right, let's go to our, are we all fine with bright light? Let's look at what happens in bright light. Your circular muscles contract, your radial muscles will relax, and the size of your pupil will become smaller. 
the size of your pupil will become smaller, less light can enter, um, and this is so that your photoreceptors on your retina is not overstimulated. Remember what happened when we stared at that little yellow line all the time? Your eyes became tired. So we don't want to overstimulate anything. In dim light, the exact opposite happens. Now in dim light, your pupil will dilate. It becomes larger. Now, if it becomes larger, your circular muscles relax. Your circular muscles relax. The uh, radial muscles will contract. Remember, they always work opposite to each other. If the circular muscles relaxes, the radial muscles will contract. If the circular muscles contract, the radial muscles will relax. They always work opposite. If the circular muscles relaxes, it means your pupil can become larger and more light can enter your eye so that it helps you to see. If you have ever walked into a very uh, dark room when you came from a very bright room, what happens to your eyes? Is it easy for you to see or does it take a little bit of time to adjust? If you walk from a bright light into a dark room, what happens to your eyes? Can you immediately see? or does it take a little bit of time for you to adjust? Let me quickly see what the answer is here. It does take a while to adjust, all right? It does take your eye to adjust. And I've learned a little trick that someone taught me once. If you blink two or three times as you walk from a bright room into a darker room, it does help your eye to adjust a little bit faster. But it's just the time it takes for those muscles because remember, you come from a very bright room, so your circular muscles are constricted, they are not relaxed, and they need to relax now to let in more light. So it takes your eyes a little bit of time to adjust walking from a dark room into a light room. And the same happens the other way around. <laughs> or you can walk in with your eyes closed. That also helps actually. Um, I'm just quickly have the questions up here. So let me quickly answer some while we take in the, the, the pupillary mechanism. Um, we had a question about corneal arcus. And usually that is, um, if you have high cholesterol, there's, and you don't, these cholesterol deposits around the, around the iris. And it's just like a little ring. It doesn't affect your eyes. Um, doctors just use it sometimes to diagnose high cholesterol. Then we have, why do we have two types of iris? That is just inheritance. Um, if you have two colored eyes, that's all about your genetics. And you've just, remember brown eyes are dominant. Any other colored eyes is recessive. And it just depends on the, the genes you have for your eyes. Um, uh, can your pupil get damaged? Well, your pupil is just an opening, but your radial muscles or your um, circular muscles can be damaged, but that's part of your eye and part of your iris. So the pupil is the opening. So here we have dim light. Remember the radial muscles go from the center to the edge of the iris. They will contract. So when they contract, we know the circular muscles will constrict. They be, um, so when the radial muscles contract, they constrict, your circular muscles will relax and your pupil will get bigger. It will widen. You allow more light in and you can see easier in the dark. So I'm gonna quickly just go back to that um, video we have. Let me just go back to the site and just show us again what happens. So you have a visual. Now look at the pupil size and look at what happens. All right, so here we have bright light, very bright light. Your pupil will constrict, it will become smaller. 
the circular muscles will contract, the radial muscles will relax. Then if you walk into a darker room or it becomes nighttime, your pupil dilates, your circular muscles will relax and your radial muscles will constrict. The two always work opposite of each other. Binocular vision. So this is vision using two eyes with overlapping fields of view so that the separate images are combined and interpreted as one by the brain. So when you closed your one eye and you try to match up your, your pencil tips or your fingertips, your brain only got the vision from one eye. It couldn't exactly place where the fingertips or the pencil tips were because it was missing the other eye's image and the other eye's input. Now, if you lose sight at a later age in one of your eyes, you can still drive, um, you can still um, have a normal life, your depth perception would just be affected. Now, people with only one eye and one vision, um, they have some depth perception, but not all. They have some, but not all. And here we have your binocular vision. Bi means two, ocular means eye. So binocular means two eyes. And you just need to know that this is very important for judging distance and judging depth. Binocular vision helps us with distance and depth. All right, so here's another image just to um, see if you throw a ball at someone and you close one of your eyes, it will be very difficult to catch that ball. But if you have both eyes open and someone throws an object at you, it would be easier to catch. And that's just because binocular vision helps with depth perception and with judging distance. All right, now this is how the eye sees. And if you have physical sciences, you might have a little bit of an advantage, but not much because we're not looking at the lenses. Um, this is physical science, but this shows us how the eye sees. Now, remember your lens will act like any other lens we use in the lab or your lenses of your glasses. Light will be refracted or, and reflected through the lens. So remember your cornea is see-through, so light will go through it, your lens is see-through, light rays will go through it. But as soon as it goes through something that is bent or that is curved, it bends a little bit. So you will see an object, the light ray passes through your cornea, through your pupil, through your lens. And remember, we don't see an object, we see light rays, and they get transformed into an impulse and our brain interprets the impulse. So your light ray goes through your cornea, through your pupil, through your lens, and it gets bent a little bit. And then on the back of your retina, it is projected. And remember in the retina is where we have all the rods and the cones, and they are the photoreceptors. They, photo is another word in science for light, photoreceptor. The, the um, cones will absorb all the light, all the all the light input, and it gets transferred into an electrical impulse that leaves through the optical nerve, and that's how we see. So impulses passes along the optic nerve to the cerebrum for interpretation. Vision is produced in your cerebrum. Your eyes only take in the image, but your brain makes you see. So your, if your brain is damaged in the area where vision is, then even if your eyes are working perfectly, you will have problems with vision. So even if your eyes are working fine, but the area in the brain where vision is produced is affected, you will still have problems with vision. 
All right, and then we have accommodation. Accommodation, if you accommodate someone, you adjust your behavior or you adjust a little bit to make life easier for them. And that is exactly what accommodation is for the lens. Your eye can adjust, it can change its shape, the lens, to um, adapt or accommodate with if we're looking at an object that is far away or an object that is close by. Now, I want you to do another thing for me. Point your finger like you did. Just stretch out and look at your fingertip and focus on your fingertip. And then you focus on something far in the distance, the wall, or maybe you see one of your family members or you are sitting near a window. Change between focusing on your fingertip and then focusing behind the fingertip and focusing on the fingertip now, if you focus on your fingertip, can you clearly see the images in the distance or is the fingertip the clearest? If you focus on your fingertip, will your fingertip be the one in focus or the one or the image behind your fingertip? Which one will be in focus if you look at your fingertip? All right, your fingertip, Ooh. you will, gosh, your fingertip. So if you focus on your fingertip, your lens has accommodated to focus on your fingertip only and everything behind your fingertip will be blurry. But if you focus on something in the background far away, your fingertip will be blurry, but the object in the back will be very, very clear. So let's see how accommodation works. So you've got your ciliary muscles over here. You've got your ligaments. You remember your ligaments is attached to your lens and convex means it bulges out. There's a difference between convex and concave. Convex is when it's more shaped like an egg or a rugby ball and concave is when um, it is shaped uh, almost like a Y, it's, it's a different shape. So convex is when it's more rounded. Now, if you near vision, if you focus on an object very close by, your ciliary muscles will contract. Now remember, two things work opposite each other. If your ciliary muscles contract, they become tighter. Your suspensory ligaments will slacken and your lens becomes more convex. It becomes more rounded. So if these muscles contract, the ligaments will relax. And if they are relaxed, they are not pulling on the lens so much and the lens will become rounder. It bulges out, it becomes rounder. This makes it easier for light rays to bend to bend more and a clear image is focused on the retina. A clear image is focused on the retina. And the exact opposite happens when you have distant vision. Your ciliary muscles will relax. Remember, if they relax, your ligaments will become tighter. And if they become tighter, they pull your lens out a little bit and your lens will become flatter, less convex, it will become flatter and the light rays will bend less and you will have a clear image. So let's see if we can see that in practice. Let's look at that in practice. Oh goodness, all these sites I've opened. Now this Vision Direct is a wonderful website to go to. It's actually a type of optometrist, but they've made these available for us to understand vision and understand how the eye works. Um, so here you have your lens. Let's just look at the little pluses. You've got your lens. And remember, you've got your ciliary muscles and you've got your ligaments. So if the ligaments are relaxed, the muscles are tighter. If the ligaments are tighter, the muscles are relaxed. Here you have your cornea. Your cornea is also convex in shape and it allows for light to pass through. It is clear. So the sunflower in this image is close. 
The mountains are far away. And remember, we are going to focus on what happens on the shape of the lens and what happens to the image. So here it's in the middle. So the sunflower and the mountains are in focus. So if we focus only on the sunflower, we want to focus on the sunflower. Did you see that your lens became more convex? Your lens became more convex and these ligaments relaxed. The suspensory ligaments relaxed, which means that your muscles contracted a bit. And you focus on the flower close to you and the mountains that are far away will be out of focus. If we go back to the middle, now we want to focus on the mountains. What do you think will happen to your lens? Will your lens be flatter, so less um, convex, or will it be more convex, rounded? If you want to focus far away, will your lens be less convex or more convex? Let me see some answers. Yep, less convex, well done. So let's focus on the mountains behind us. I find it very funny that there are snow on the mountains and sunflowers. So here we have focused on the mountains. We can see that the flower is out of focus. The mountain is in focus because we are focusing on something far away. These ligaments have tightened up. Your lens is flatter and the muscles are relaxed. And this helps us to focus far and near. Let's quickly do this again, just one more time. So we're focusing near, that eye is becoming, the lens is becoming rounded and the muscles are constricted, the ligaments relax. And if I focus on the mountains in the distance, my lens become flatter, so it's less convex. So if it's less convex, it means that the ligaments have uh, constricted a bit and the muscles are relaxed. So if you remember anything from today is that things always work antagonistic. They work opposite each other. If one's relaxed, the other one will constrict. And this is distant vision. Now we have common vision defects. Common vision defects, and we're going to focus on three. Nearsightedness, farsightedness, and astigmatism. And you can have astigmatism and be farsighted, or you can be nearsighted and have astigmatism. Now, if we look at nearsightedness, your lens will refract too much and your image will be in front of the retina. In farsightedness, there's not enough refraction. Refraction is when this light comes in and it bends. It doesn't bend enough the light and it will be focused behind the retina. And if you have an asymmetric refraction, so your lens isn't smooth or it's shaped a little bit, not an exact convex shape, then the light rays will refract all higgledy biggledy and they'll be all in different refractions and no image will occur. Um, I have astigmatism and the optometrist once explained to me that astigmatism is having like a corrugated iron roof for a lens. They are a lot, it's not smooth. It's not smooth, it's a little bit misshaped. And that's why the light is refracted, not in one single way, and you won't have a single image that forms. So let's see how they fix it, because all of these are easy to fix. All right, so here we have lenses. Let me quickly just show you the lens. So we are very familiar with convex because our cornea is convex and our, our own eyes lens is convex. It's shaped a little bit like a rugby ball, it bulges out. Concave goes in. Concave goes in and this is why I said it looks a little bit like a flower vase or like the letter Y, it goes in, concave. We can see with when you have a convex lens, light rays pass through and then they bend. And when they bend, they form an image where they all meet up. With concave, they bend out away from each other so they don't meet up. And these are the two types of lenses we use to fix 
nearsightedness or farsightedness. So in nearsightedness or shortsightedness is when a person can see nearby, but they can't see distant objects. Nature of the defect. So when you look at distant objects, remember when you look at distant objects, your lens becomes a little bit flatter. The light rays focus in front of the retina, causing blurred vision. So there are a few things what that might cause this. There's not only one. Your eyeball is too long. So when that lens stretch out a little bit, it relaxes. It's not enough. It's not flat enough. Your cornea is too curved. So your cornea is, remember, over your, over your eye. It's protective. Is not curved enough or your lens can't become less convex. Your lens can't become flatter. And all three of these will cause us not to be able to see things in the distance. Remember to see things in the distance, we need to have a flatter lens. It needs to be stretched out a little bit. Three things, your eyeball is too long, your cornea is too curved, or your lens can't become um, less convex or flatter. Remember, we have no control over our corneas. We can't flatten our corneas or make them more convex, only the lens. Now, wear glasses with concave lenses. I'm quickly gonna skip back to the lens. If your eye is too convex, they balance it out with a concave lens. So if your eye is too convex, if it's too convex, then they balance it out with a concave lens. So here we have nearsightedness or short-sightedness. The fancy a medical name for that is myopia. So the image forms in front of the retina. It's in front of the retina, not on the retina. And it is because you can't, you, the, your lens is too curved. You can see close objects, but you can't see things in the distance. Here we see the light rays that come in, the image is in front of the retina, and they fix it by giving you a concave lens, and that balances out your lens, your actual eye lens, that is too convex. And the image will still be on the retina. Any questions about nearsightedness, shortsightedness, myopia? They're all the same thing. Any questions about this? All right, so let me see. Bob, what bends the light rays? As Cal Henry said, um, it's the convex shape of the lens. So if you have physical sciences or physics, you would have learned that if light hits one, um, medium it bends and light bends more or less depends on the medium so your glasses is made of glass your cornea is also um curved as is your lens so yeah it depends on if it goes from one medium to the other it bends away from the normals thank you very much for answers okay what so this is a very good question. Very good question, Tabani. If you don't have any problems with your eyes, if your eyes are normal, your lenses are fine, the curvature is fine, your cornea curve is fine, your eyeball is fine, then you allow light. And if light comes through your cornea and through your lens, you can see properly. If you, see, if you wear someone's glasses, so if you put a lens in front of, if you put an eye lens a gla or glasses lens, let's distinguish between the two. If you put your spectacles, your glass lens in front of your own lens, you will change how the light bends onto your own cornea and then onto your own lens. So it's very, very bad for you to wear someone else's glasses if you don't need them. All right. What exactly makes your eyes see things closer than they appear? It's the bending of light. So if you stand, especially if you like fishing um, and you stand above water, because water bends differently in, a light bends differently in water than it does in air, things will look closer 
when it's underwater than when it that it actually is and it's just because the way light bends but it's not your eyes it's the way it's in physics how light bends um how is astigmatism corrected again it's just the type of lens they give you so they give you a lens that will even out how the light rays um, is dispersed and they can test your type of astigmatism when you go to the optometrist, they can see exactly what the degree is. So astigmatism is, is measured in degrees. And it's just fixed with, with a lens, uh, glasses. All right, so I hope I've answered those questions. Um, very bad to wear glasses if they're not yours. They will damage your, they're not good for your own sight and you will see, um, you won't see as clear with someone else's glasses because the light rays are bent differently. And things appear closer than they are because of the way light bends in different media. For example, in water or in air, light bends differently. Okay, long sightedness or far sightedness or hypothea occurs when a person has the ability to see distant objects, but is unable to see objects clearly nearby. A lot of older people have reading glasses because they are far-sighted or long-sighted. They can see things six meters away, but they struggle to focus close. So when you look at nearby objects, the light ray focus behind the retina and you have blurred vision. So if you have are far-sighted or long-sighted and you read without your glasses, you will become very tired and the letters will be blurry. Now this, is when your eyeball is too short, it's too round. Your eyeball is too round. Remember for it to be long sighted, to see things far away, it needs to flatten out a little bit your lens. So if your cornea is not curved enough, or if your lens um, cannot become more convex. The three things that might cause long sightedness is when the eyeball is too short, it's too round, the cornea is not curved enough, or the inability of the lens to become more convex. Remember, if we want to focus on things close, that eyeball needs to become rounder. And if it can't become convex, more convex, you will be very difficult to see. And the treatment, wear convex glasses. So if your eye is too flat, wear convex glasses. So here we have the defect, your eyeball is too flat or your, your lens is too uh, flat, it's too, it's not convex enough, then the light rays will just pass through it. And if the light rays can pass through it, you won't have an image. <clears throat> if you curve it more, the light rays can bend more and you'll have an image. So to fix it, they give you a convex lens. And they give you a convex lens because your eye is not convex enough. When we are at short sightedness, when you can't see um, far, the, the reason for that is your eyeball was um, round, but it had to go flat and it couldn't. So they gave you a concave lens. If you have um, long sightedness, your lens can't become flatter. And so they are all round, rounder and they give you a rounded lens. So it always opposite each other. So far sightedness, you can see far away. You can see distance things very well, eagle eyes, but you can't read or you can't focus close. And then we have astigmatism. Astigmatism is caused by um, several things and what they do is they give you a lens that will focus the image on the on the retina they will give you a lens that focus on the retina and if you have astigmatism things will look blurry at all distances regardless if it's near or far everything will be blurry because the image can't form properly so a symptom of astigmatism is blurry vision, regardless if you focus close or you focus at more than six meters away. And then one last thing that we are gonna look at that used to be a big problem 
but nowadays with medical um, enhancement and technology, it's not, is cataracts. So cataracts occur when the clear transparent, transparent lens becomes cloudy and this prevents light from entering the eye and it results in blurred vision. Your cataracts appear slowly over time and it increases in size. Now cataracts can be removed very, very easily. Cataracts are easy to remove and they improve sight immensely. It's an immediate improvement in sight. You can't wear glasses for cataracts. Okay. Any questions about astigmatism, cataracts, nearsightedness, or farsightedness? Oh, I see we're already almost over time. So this was the last, last lesson. So I've got here something um, about astigmatism. The image bounces around because your lens isn't smooth. It's a little bit rough. And so the image bounces around and you do have blurry vision. So that's what causes the blurry vision. Bob, you are right. Um, so um, astigmatism is just, com is just cor corrected with a, uh, a lens. And then I have a question here about, let me just go through the questions. And then I think we will call it a day. See if we've got everything done. Yep, we've got through all the lesson. Tomorrow we'll be looking at exam papers. Um, and then presbyopia, presbyopia is um, course when your eyes elasticity or your eyes no longer as elastic your lens. And remember, your lens needs to change shape. So if your lens can't change shape, if it's not as elastic anymore, you will have nearsightedness um, or yeah, farsightedness that is caused by your lens not being as elastic. And that's it. So that is astigmatism, nearsightedness, farsightedness, and how your pupil works, all wrapped into one. Go try this, the, the activity with playing with a small object or a ball, have someone throw it at you. Try to catch it with one eye closed, much harder. And that's it. So tomorrow we'll be looking at the eye, the parts of the eye, how the pupil works, how we see uh, vision correctness. We'll look at all the exam papers and we'll do a gohoot. And I, I hope you guys had a good time and I've hoped you learned a little bit about your eye. And that's it. Have a lovely, lovely day, guys. An hour flew by. So have a lovely day. Any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll be on the chat. I'll be here for a little bit. And that's it for today.